Hey there, uh, my name is Brandon. I'm the brand ambassador for Lair Origin Nutrition. Thanks for tuning in today. We're actually doing something more of a gut health series, and I'll be going through different products that Lair Origin is putting out there, trying them myself, and of course, not only sharing my results, but to be able to kind of break down what it actually is and why we should probably get this in our diet. And uh, for today's video, we're actually gonna be covering what's called a synbiotic. This is the combination of both a probiotic supplement and a prebiotic. And to really understand this we and, and why it works, we need to kind of get back to the difference between a prebiotic and a probiotic. So the main difference between a prebiotic and a probiotic depends a lot actually on the way we digest these things. So typically what we see prebiotics coming from nutraceutical supplements like human milk, oligosaccharides, uh, red phenol powders, apple peel powders, uh, these are a lot of things that will resist digestion. They'll make their way down to the colon undigested and be able to feed the microbiome where in the colon or about 70 to 80% of the biome actually exists. So they do have this special ability to ferment. And in that fermentation process, they're feeding key species of, of uh, bifidobacteria, especially which can be seen as almost our master bacteria, which is super, super important to our health, our longevity, of course, our immune system, as this was the origin of kind of how it all started. So then we have a probiotic. A probiotic is a live capsule with billions of different bacteria with many different strains that we can utilize to elicit a good response. And what we're hoping to actually achieve and have the hopes for is that this capsule to break open in the colon and to add to the beneficial sea of good gut microbes. And a lot of times when it's on its own, it doesn't necessarily work that well. Right? And it doesn't work exactly on how we intend. And this is where the idea of the symbiotic comes from, because we're going to be using the benefits of a prebiotic fiber to allow proper fermentation to help the probiotic bacteria grow and flourish. And the best way to kind of think about this is to look at this like you're actually gardening. So the prebiotic fibers would be more so as the soil to your garden bed. And the probiotics would be the seed that we're planting and ultimately fermenting into the plant itself. Well, if we don't have prebiotics, if we don't have that foundation, there's nothing for those probiotics to actually ferment off of. So in this case, it's like we're trying to plant seeds just on a cement garden bed, right? So we're just tossing uh, some seeds onto the cement and we're hoping that something may grow. And yeah, we may get some growth between the cracks of the actual gravel or cement itself, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good one. Right? And a lot of times if we're taking these probiotics on an empty stomach or supplementing them for way too long, we can start to develop things like SIBO. So this is definitely one thing that we need to be careful of, of supplementing a probiotic by itself, again, in a fasted state and prolonged usage. So this is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. This is when we get the right bacteria in the wrong place. Okay, So the small intestine is not necessarily sterile but it does not hold the key to the microbiome as much as the colon does, right? And this is very, very important. So ideally what we're doing is we're looking to combine both prebiotic and probiotic to elicit a more synergistic and powerful effect. So there is a ton of good research out there to support the efficacy of a symbiotic. Uh, and more specifically, there was a research article posted on the Letter Origin Nutrition blog that actually looked at the supplementation in controlled groups of the supplementation of a probiotic bifidobacteria species and an HMO together, and of course, respectively, on their own. So what it took a look at was group one was fed just a species of bifidobacteria probiotic for about seven days. Then it moved on to uh, HMO group, and they were just fed HMOs for about 14 days. Group three, however, took both, the probiotic for seven days, the HMOs for 14. So typically what they found with the probiotic fed group is that bifidobacteria populations rose alongside the supplementation, but after day seven, so day eight, those levels started to decline. Okay, and this just highlights again, a pretty key issue that it's not fermenting correctly, perhaps. And group two, just the HMO fed group, kind of similar results, right? We saw some baseline fermentation and the way that they actually tested this was through fecal, uh, fecal test post. Uh, study just to kind of see the actual bifidobacteria species and how it populated and so forth. 
Group 3, however, the symbiotic group, experienced a massive rise in prolonged bifidobacteria fermentation afterwards for up to about a week or two post. Right? So this is, again, highlighting just a really, really important step here is that we need both. And both definitely work really well together to be able to ferment the right bacteria. And of course, this is again highlighting that we also need the correct foods. To help ferment this, we're going to need key fibers, right? And this is going to be coming from, say, raw vegetables, especially, or just lightly cooked. One's typically high in cellulose or hemicellulose. It's a compound that the body cannot digest. So during that undigested phase, traveling down to the colon, the body just ferments it, right? And, and bifidobacteria feeds off this fermented uh, cellulose and plant matter. Same thing goes for polyphenols, right? These are pigments. These are found in, say, blackberries and raspberries. They're typically what give them their black and red color. These polyphenols act as a prebiotic, which travel down to the colon and, again, ferment correctly and feed good strains of bifidobacteria. And we can go along the list, right? So cooked and cooled starches for resistant starch, uh, which would include also like semi-green bananas, for example. So as we're starting to increase the plant matter in the diet alongside with the symbiotic, we can start to achieve much better results. Ultimately, my experience, I have had SIBO in the past, which was not fun, and it took a very long time to help get rid of it. And what helped actually get rid of it was human milk oligosaccharides. It is very, very powerful at being able to target the bad bacteria. So ultimately, right off the gates, we're combining about 1,000 milligrams of human milk oligosaccharides in combination with the lactobacillus and bifidobacteria strains that's included in the HMO layer origin symbiotic. So right off the bat, we're also benefiting that kind of key area of hopefully not developing SIBO. And the product itself I find is very beneficial. I did notice a tiny bit of bloating up at first, which subsided after a few days. And things just got a little bit better from there. And that's typically how it goes, especially if you're a first time user for any of these things. But ultimately, first time precautions is super important. A lot of times what I like to do is just break open the capsule, mix it into yogurt, just to allow that kind of fermentation to act quite naturally uh, and rather run, not running the risk of this bacteria kind of opening up where it shouldn't in the small intestine. And again, this isn't much of an issue if you're not taking it for very long periods of time. And of course, if you're taking it fasted, which is again, uh, definitely a no-go. We want to be able to take these with our first meal, whatever time that may be. If it's 8 a.m., if it's 12 noon, it does not matter. Taking that with your break fast meal is going to be the best way to do it, just so we can allow proper fermentation from these key fibers in our diet as well. And ultimately, the time frame, right? So the time frame is a key aspect that we should be thinking about as well. And you know, a lot of the stuff out there with probiotics is that we want to be taking it forever or, you know, take it for 12 weeks and we'll be okay. But naturally, it doesn't necessarily work that way. And, you know, a lot of the key research and recent experiences, I would even say supplement for about two weeks, take two weeks off and see how you feel. Resupplement again for two weeks. And ultimately, that should bring you to about the designated uh, supplements in the designated kind of dosage. Uh, so you have about 60 capsules in the bottle. And uh, just to show too, it is the pure HMO symbiotic. You can see a bit of a glare here. Um, but this, you're getting 60 capsules, breaking that down into about two capsules per serving. And again, if you want to break those open and sprinkle those on your yogurt or smoothie or whatever that may be, just to kind of get that extra step in there. Uh, an extra precaution, definitely a good option. Otherwise, just taking that with breakfast, two with breakfast for about two weeks, take some time off, see how you feel before reintroducing them again. All right? And this is just, again, proper precautions that we do want to take and also to not let your body get used to it and to be able to kind of ferment on itself and let the food do the rest of the work. So that's ultimately kind of what we're looking for when we're taking a symbiotic in general. And uh, definitely best of luck. I would 100% recommend to feel like comment, ask any questions. Personally, I'm always happy to help as well. And just to kind of see as we've gone through um, not only just the research, 
but it's our experiments in, in our experience as well, right? It's super, super important to kind of test these things and to see how we feel. But again, I think the combination with human milk oligosaccharides and a probiotic supplementation of bifidobacteria is just the way to go. Uh, and again, this is the cutting edge. This is kind of at the forefront of what we're going for. And these things are just innately tied to immunity. It is not just gut health and digestion and bowel movements and brain fog. It is the gut brain access, the gut brain connection. You know, we are one large tube from mouth to anus. So that tube needs to be closed. And the best way to do that is to proliferate good bacteria, which the fermentation of human milk oligosaccharides and the bifidobacteria strains lactobacillus will do. So it's again, super, super important that we are taking those precautions and taking those steps to be able to heal and seal the gut so we can start to correct insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance. We can start to correct neurodegenerative diseases and start to pr like just prevent these things in general. So uh, again, all very important steps that we are taking with such a small compound to elicit such amazing results. Uh, and again, my name is Brandon, uh, brand ambassador for Lateral Origin, and uh, just feel free to comment and uh, be happy to help. Thanks for tuning in.